We are a backward-looking society. We are backward-looking because it is just human nature. We all experienced the past ourselves. And we look around and see evidence of the past all around us. All information we are creating suddenly becomes history. So the past is very knowledgeable, but yet we're spending the rest of our lives in the future. So it almost seems like we are walking backwards into the future. So my job is it to help you turn around? Is it to help you to create an understanding of what the future might hold? At the moment, there are four unique factors coming together. First of all, it's the global talent and global knowledge sharing community. It's the people like you coming together, but not only here offline, also online. On the internet, you can have access to anything you'd like about transplantation and other medical issues. The low cost of production, the cost of founding a company is going down, and the cost of producing an app, a mobile um, solution or in a digital product is going down rapidly. It's not about millions anymore and years of development. It's probably only about weeks, hours, and a smart team behind it. Next factor is lean technology. You don't produce a perfect 100% product anymore. So they basically do an MVP, a minimal viable product to get started, and then they um, do trial and error on the way. And last but not least, the fourth factor is new access to capital. And it's important. The venture capital scene and private equity um, industry is investing in this field, but also there are the potential patients, the clients, who actually pay for it. There are campaigns called crowdfunding where basically products which have not been even introduced or not even produced can be sold to an audience who are willing to pay for that. There's this little point in the middle, and that's the innovation hotspot. It's where all these factors come together. That's where innovation happens. So please smile. No, I'm not taking a picture of you. I'm taking a picture of me. Not from my face, from my body, but not from the outside from the inside. Probably I'll start over again, it was weird. Um, this is Wello. It's a little case you just plug on your, on your iPhone. And you can measure blood pressure, ECG, heart rate, blood oxygen, temperature, and lung functions. And it's a consumer product for 200 US dollar. Imagine some of the patients would walk into your room with such a device. But there's more. There's a tricorder called Scanner to Scout, which is also in the same price range almost. You can have an interactive pregnancy tracking device. You can track the kids' heart rate or rollover alerts. And you can all collect them in a dashboard, like this one, the Apple Health Kit. And I'll go a little bit back, the evolution of mankind. We've been in a big evolution from the early stages to the industrial age to the computer revolution, where we sit in front of the computers and adapt our human beings to the usage of these technologies. But it's now changing a little bit. We have laptops, we have smartphones, and we basically stand up again. And <laughs> at some point, we will be standing straight again and having really technical devices which help us without adapting to their needs but rather that the technology adapts to our needs. So the vision is clear. It's like a virtual augmented display. There are sensors, for example, here in a contact lens, which measures the glucose. There are little plasters, biostems, which you can put on the skin, which are triggered also and empowered by your skin <coughs> as well. They are movable. It's like an electric tattoo. And you can also digest them and then you have sensors inside. So the question is, when we collect all this data, what do we do with it? What do you do with it? So we are creating a BAN, B-A-N, Body Area Network. We are collecting all different kinds of vital signs. And at the moment, they're just um, on our wrist.
but at some point they will be even implemented into our body. This data tsunami has many impacts on your daily business, but most importantly, it is reshaping one relationship which has traditionally defined healthcare, the relationship between the patient and the doctor. So as the empowered patient have access to this vast majority of medical information, genetic analysis like 23andMe for $99, medical records, and even probably your scribbles and notes, they come with a big expectation. And they have basically two things in mind. First of all, when it comes to care, they want to collaborate. They want to discuss the different ways to taking care. And secondly, they expect options. So who are these people? Who are these empowered patients? Um, and what does it mean for you? How will you commun communicate with them? Will you use WhatsApp, email, or will you do a FaceTime video call? Will you share all information you're collecting with them as well? So I talked about ubiquitous health tech, data sexuals, orchestrated data, empowering patients. And there's one thing I can tell you. Everything that can be digitalized will be digitalized. And the rest, and the rest as well. Thank you very much.